Welcome to CS Awesome. CS Awesome is a free APCSA curriculum. It is officially endorsed by the College Board as a curriculum and as a PD provider. And it teaches Java coding in an interactive ebook uh, where scaffolding and the transition from CSP to CSA is supported. And we also provide teacher lesson plans with extra resources. Let's check out some of the important links. To get to the curriculum, your students can type in course.csawesome.org and it will be redirected to the RuneStone site, um, which is a, a, a server that has a lot of free books on it, including CS Awesome. Um, another site and an important link is csawesome.org for teachers. And from there, too, you can get to the curriculum with this first link. But here you will find all the teacher lesson plans, the resources, professional development um, information, and an instructor guide to RuneStone. Um, to get to the lesson plans, you have to be a member of the Teaching CS Awesome Forum. So make sure that you join that to have access to these. Um, it is also free. So once you have access, you'll be able to select a unit and every single lesson has teacher developed lesson plans um, for it, which you can just access right here. Or you can go to, to your Google Drive and click on Share Drive and get to the CS Awesome Drive that way with the account that you're um, registered with for the Teaching CS Awesome Forum. So you can get to the lesson plans this way as well. Um, so going back to the curriculum, um, it's organized in 10 units, as we can see here. And this follows the College Board CSA guidelines. So every unit is exactly, has all the lessons that the College Board requires. And each lesson meets all the learning objectives that are required. There's also a lot of practice units with practice FRQs and multiple choice questions and so on. So on. We do have a pacing guide here um, and the syllabus and the solutions that will also help you um, to pace through this curriculum. Um, so let's take a look at the curriculum and the curriculum design. Let's go to unit one and the first lesson here, why programming, why Java. And um, you'll see that this is an interactive ebook for the students where uh, they're given a little bit of text um, to explain what they're supposed to do. And then they can run code right in the book. So here um, I ran the code and I see the out output below and I can change it. and run it again and see it again. Um, if I come back to this page or refresh it, there's a load history button and I can go back and see all my changes from before and see what kind of changes I did in the, in the book. If you're logged in, you can, um, the system will save all your results. And as a teacher, you can create your own course so that instead of CS Awesome here, you'll have your own course name and you'll have your students join that course and they'll be able to um, save all their work in your course and you'll be able to see all their progress and what they did. Other than these active code problems, there are also what's called Parsons problems or mixed up code problems. And this is a great transition from block-based programming to text-based programming. Um, and this was, um, a lot of these were developed by Barb Erickson, and this was her research area um, to show that, that these Parson problems were very effective in, in teaching. Um, and this book, the CS Awesome materials, are based on Barb Erickson's Java review course on RuneStone, which is also linked in the APCSA CED. Um, but CS Awesome has taken that material and um, enhanced it and made sure that it meets all the College Board requirements as a full curriculum. So when you drag and drop the, the code blocks here, you can check it. And if you make three mistakes, you can ask for some help. 
Um, so it says click on help me. And when you do that, it will try to make the, pro the problem easier. So for example, here it's gonna combine two blocks. So combine these two together. So it's a little bit easier now. Um, and you can check it now in this formative exercise, you will eventually get it right. Um, there's also Parsons problems with distractors like this where pairs of blocks are shown. So for example, these two blocks where the only difference is a semicolon on the end. So the student has to pick one of them, the correct one. And the help me here will remove one of the distractors here. Um, so in this way, they're learning the syntax of Java without having to type in and test everything. But they're learning that a semicolon really matters here. And then later on, this kind of scaffolding um, they will have to put that into effect and notice things like, oh, it needs a closing quote, it needs a semicolon, and so on, and fix these errors. Um, other than these formative exercises, there's always some kind of challenge at the end. Um, this one isn't that complex, but as they get more complex, we encourage um, people to work in pairs, students to work in pairs on this, and we try to make them collaborative and creative and open-ended. And we'll see some examples of that in a bit. Um, so in the College Board curriculum, objects are introduced early in Unit 2, but just using objects, um, not writing the classes. Writing the classes are, are in Unit 5. Um, so in CS Awesome, we do turtle designs, um, creative programming, in order to provide a bridge from something familiar um, to the Java syntax, which is new. So for example, here is some turtle code. If I run this one in unit two, and you'll see the turtle is moving because of this forward turn left and forward command. Um, so students have seen things like this before, but now they're getting used to the Java syntax. How do you create an object? Use the new keyword. How do you call this methods? Um, that kind of syntax, and also learning all the vocabulary of object-oriented programming, things like attributes and methods and things like that. Um, here, some of the challenges are more open-ended and creative. So for example, in this lesson at the end, the challenge is to design um, a turtle house, a house for your, oops, not this one, a, house for your turtle. Here we go. Um, and use a lot more complex um, coding with, with the turtle in order to do this. Um, we also have scaffolded FRQ practice and scaffolded AP labs built in, and we're, we're continuously adding more things. And we also try to present block code next to Java code so that that transition from CSP to CSA um, is supported. Um, let me show you one of the FRQs. Um, so part of the FRQs is, is learning to read the problem and find different things. Um, that you need to do. So here, for example, you need to figure out what instance variables you need to create here. Um, so you can click on different things in here and check to see, oh, would this be an instance variable? Let me see. So I found three of them, but not all of them, so on. And so these are scaffolded with some questions, um, you know, some multiple choice questions, some brief coding, you know, how would you call the accessor method here, for example. Um, so that, that scaffolding will lead them to finally writing the solution and being able to write, run it as well. Um, let's also take a look at the lesson plans, which we talked about before. So the lesson plans were created by CSA teachers, and they have a standard format with an overview, the learning objectives, the materials you need for this lesson, um, if, if the College Board recommended more than one day, we'll break it up for you and, and show you how you could break it up. And then we have some suggestions on how to use the curriculum. So maybe some kind of hook or motivation. Um, 
how to break it up so that perhaps some of the code you show in class and have them do it together and some of the code you have them work in pairs and perhaps work through you know the next two active codes in pairs and so on and then usually some kind of group work as well creative group work um, and then in the lesson plans there's always a section for differentiation more practice and enrichment some background knowledge um, and in the background knowledge, often there's some videos if you need those. Some teaching tips for the transition from CSP to CSA. Um, and um, what, what you should do in the AP classroom um, to once you finish a certain lesson. There's also many extra materials that the teachers created for us. So there's lots of worksheets. So the FRQs require written writing code. So it's good to have practice with that. So here, for example, uh, they're given a toy class and they practice writing constructors for it. And these could be homework um, or they could be in class assignments. Um, so these are all extra materials that are not in the ebook, but extra to use in class. Um, in terms of other instructor support, the teaching forum is, is great. It, it has um, lots of teachers who are willing to support one other, another and share resources. Uh, we provide the solutions file. Um, and you can also build a custom course in RuneStone and it, we have help on how to do that and how to do grading as well. I wanted to end with um, the diversity challenge in CS, which I'm sure you've heard about. Um, so one of the goals of CS Awesome is to change this. So here you'll see the total AP exam takers and you'll see how the female students and the minority students um, in CSP, it, it goes down, but it goes down even further in CSA. And CSA is one of the most male skewed AP exams. So we wanna definitely change this. So we also provide a lot of resources for inclusive and engaging pedagogy and trying to change um, some of the status quo in CS. And some of this is built into the curriculum and some of it, this is um, just resources for you to use as you teach the course. Thank you and I hope that you will enjoy CS Awesome.